We're doing two main things with this next part of the demo. First, we're integrating a deep neural network visual system with the arm to locate targets. And second, we're demonstrating that these methods work during a dynamic reaching motion, which is more challenging because of inertial effects. The inset to the left is showing target acquisition and tracking of the target. The location sent to the arm for reaching is the dot in the middle of the box. The neural network being used is a variant of the Inception and ResNet architectures introduced by Google and Microsoft about a year ago. Notice that the camera image can't tell you where the object is in 3D space. We're using the Intel RealSense camera because it provides a depth estimate between about 30 centimeters and 1 meter away from the camera. Combining depth at the detected location with the position in the image allows us to calculate a 3D coordinate. The color of the box indicates which target is being tracked, and we can switch targets. We will turn off the video feed during the reaching because displaying or recording the video slows down target acquisition. We'll use the Santa as the main target because it's smaller, making it easier to visually evaluate the accuracy of the reaching. With a compliant controller, the arm can reach to the target sent to it from the vision system fairly accurately. However, when we add a weight like before, we can quickly see that it no longer makes a very accurate reach. It will have a difficult time with the weight, especially when the weight is moving quickly. Most obviously, it's undershooting its desired target. And during motion, inertial effects make compensation especially difficult for the controller. Again, this is because the model that the controller is working with is inaccurate and doesn't change with additional unknown mass. We'll now switch to the adaptive controller. Like the compliant controller, the adaptive controller moves fine with no unexpected weight. However, when we add a perturbation, the two pound weight, we can see that the controller immediately begins to adapt, not undershooting by as much as the standard compliant controller, as well, if we present a stationary target, we can see the arm learning how to get there. The function that the arm has to learn is quite complicated because it's sensitive to joint angles, velocity, mass, and other variables. As a result, we need to train it for a while to get the controller behaving better. This involves showing it several targets and training across them. We're now in the process of loading weights that we've trained for a longer time, about a half an hour. As you will see on the first reach, it's good at handling the extra mass while reaching quite accurately. It will continue to adapt while it is making these additional movements, but now it's effective at accounting for this perturbation even during dynamic motion. We can also switch the controller between different targets on the fly to demonstrate that the vision system is able to integrate seamlessly with the newly learned controller. This concludes part two of our three-part ABR adaptive control demo.